So uh, it, it, just to follow up on George's uh, um, uh, presentation is as an example of the integration and the, uh, the, the organization of the research that we have within the cluster, uh, I thought we could, sh we could show a few slides of one of the groups uh, within the cluster that has thought about that and we're trying to organize ourselves in the sense that we can bring the maximum value to the industry uh, on the short term. Uh, which is not always the priority at the academic level. And we're trying to see if we, uh, it, it basically happened by accident, but eventually we tried to formalize it. Uh, working with industry, you need to uh, address problems on the very short term and uh, in the academic uh, uh, field. It's a challenge, but at the same time, it can be very exciting. So I'll try to go quick. Um, so you, you've all seen such pictures that show that the, the actual opportunity of solar is a huge one. Uh, within the next century, this is going to be a huge market. So I just want to bring that up to, to uh, suggest a different uh, a change in the debate where we've been talking a lot about does Canada need solar or does Canada have enough light or is, uh, I think it's, it's, a, it's, it's a good question to ask. But I think the better question to ask is, is solar a good uh, business opportunity for the long run? And I think that that changes, I mean, if Canada exports solar technology to the whole world, it, it becomes irrelevant whether we have light or not. Um, and I think Canada has very big strengths in that field. Quebec as well, so I'm talking about it because we had to make that debate within Quebec, but I think it's, it's good for Canada as well. Uh, I show this sort of a review of the uh, uh, the world records in solar cell efficiencies, but it's not so much for the numbers, but to show two trends that I think are uh, telling a lot about the industry. If you look at all the different technologies, uh, most technologies from the middle part, which are flat panel, uh, silicon. Um, uh, CDT, SIGs, and all these, these technologies, they've gone through an improvement of, uh, of efficiency, and the efficiency hasn't moved that much in terms of percentage through the, the last uh, decade or so. Uh, this sort of means that the industry is getting more mature, the, uh, the physics behind the problem is well controlled, and now they're moving on to lowering cost, doing all the other issues that we discussed this morning, like financing, install, installing, and everything. Where if you look at the top here, the, the, the most efficient cells and the bottom there, the low efficiency but very low cost cells of uh, uh, organics and, 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 and others, uh, they're still moving relatively fast on the efficiency side, which means that the, uh, the, 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 the physics and the basics of the technology still remain to be optimized. So there's still room for improving the cells in the short term. Uh, uh, just in terms of efficiency. So CPV, where is my field, uh, falls in that category where uh, we still have a lot of work to do even on the basics of the technology. So we haven't exploited anywhere near the potential of the technology. The challenge is that we have to do that in the, in the market where other technologies are decades ahead uh, in terms of development. So you need to run the race quickly. Um, so what we did, uh, recently, I mean this year, we, we have been collaborating, uh, I mean the, the, the two universities uh, between uh, University of Ottawa Sun Lab, uh, Karen Hinzer's lab with Trevor Hall and, and Henry Schreimer, we've been collaborating together for five or six years. Uh, we've done the Sunrise project together, uh, which brought together uh, the Ottawa people, the Sherbrooke people, and uh, uh, open solar and serum technology in a, in a large project that meant covering all aspects of the technology from materials, cells, packaging, putting together modules, a tracker, and having a demonstrator out in the field. And we uh, achieved those goals uh, and the, the tracker was actually started uh, uh, last fall at uh, NRC. And, and we actually uh, have collecting data right now. So the experience of that project showed us the value of uh, when you work with industry of covering all aspects of the technology from the beginning to the end. 
and sitting together discussing all these aspects at once. Um, so <clears throat> basically, if you, we summarize very quickly the expertise of the group that we formed, actually, uh, we, we formed a group between the two, uh, the two universities, which is called 4CPV, or the Canadian Collaborative Center on CPV. Um, it's formalizing a, a partnership that has been going on for a few years now. Uh, and what we do, if you sum up pretty much all the expertise that are within this 4CPV uh, group, we have people that work on the materials for the cells, uh, like basic studies of the materials, we can grow the materials, we can fabricate the cells. Uh, once, I mean, we can also do physical modeling, optimizing of the structures, so very basic uh, science around that to improve the efficiency. And it's, there's still a lot of uh, room to imp for improvement in that field. We, well, after that, we mount the cells uh, on carriers. We have, uh, well, actually, we, uh, the Ottawa uh, group uh, that some of you will get a chance to visit tomorrow have uh, a unique testing system, a solar concentrator that can, can perform uh, continuous high concentration testing, which is unique in the world. Um, we do thermal studies, packaging studies. We improve the packaging, the assembly. We are looking at imp uh, improving the performance at high concentration uh, for the future systems. We also do uh, systematic thermal studies with uh, a systematic setup that allows us to do standardized heat, heat management uh, testing. And ultimately, we have done it uh, this year. We can build full systems put them in the field and collect the data. So that's all within the 4CPV framework that we can uh, uh, deliver on, on those kinds of, of, of issues. And to us, we think that it's a, it's a good value proposition for the industry. And especially since in Canada, a lot of the players in the industry are smaller in size with limited bandwidth to do the research. We think it's the kind of structuring of the research that can appeal to the industry and have an impact. And finally, just a few words, we just uh, started a collaboration also on, on the inert international frame uh, with a group in France who has pretty unique facilities where they have solar ovens um, that can go up to several thousand suns. Uh, that, that's one of them uh, in Cartigna. Uh, and the group is called Procédé Matériaux pour l'énergie solaire. It was promised, it's a CNRS lab. Um, and they allow us to extend our capabilities on the testing side to very high concentration, which allows us to do uh, natural light, true sun uh, testing. So that sums up basically what the, the lab's about and what we think is a model for efficient value proposition from the research. Right, and assuming that you only use high efficiency cells for the concentrators, secondly, uh, there is no application other than uh, solar farms. Am I correct in assuming that? I think, as a whole, the industry has uh, uh, mostly decided to focus on solar farms as being the application that was the closest to be affordable in the short term. I don't think the um, uh, rooftop or a smaller type of exploitation is out of the question, but I, uh, I would agree that the short term as a whole, the industry is focusing on solar farms. Quickly. One, one of the key uh, elements in CPV is the optical efficiencies. What are you doing uh, in relation with the, the optics? To change the efficiency of the optics? Well, there are, there are, it's another, another uh, characteristic of the industry is that there are several approaches for the optics. Each of them have their own efficiency issues. There are, you can use reflectors, you can use lenses, uh, frontal lenses, glass lenses. Um, and of course, the, the, the efficiency of the optics is, is a big factor. Uh, it's, it's a good thing to have uh, the efficient sol uh, solar cell. So it's a base that's, that forms the basis for the rest of the system. But after that, you have to factor in all the other losses, of course. Uh, and it, the tracker uh, optics module field is very active. Um, 
when we go to conferences, every new conference has very original uh, solutions being proposed. So it's also a sign that the industry is far from being mature. Uh, but yes, uh, improving the efficiency of the optics is, is a main issue. Thank you. Yes, I have questions here on the uh, actually effectiveness of those because uh, we live here in, in Ontario and Quebec in a very diffuse climate, which is not uh, very favorable for those. So, um, you know, the efficiency is great if you can get uh, even 40% efficiency, but you only get that, you know, when you have ideal direct light conditions. So my question here is, uh, you know, if here we produce, for example, 1,250 or so kilowatt hours per square meter um, uh, and per year with just flat panels, what would you get uh, with uh, those type of uh, concentrated modules? Well, the, the concentrated uh, field, uh, you were right in saying that it's, it depends on direct sunlight, so it, it's more sensitive to the, the, the cloud cover in the different locations. Of course, in the short term, uh, the industry is first trying to get uh, cost-effective solutions for high sunlight areas, but as I said, the, uh, the, the technology is, uh, uh, is still evolving very quickly. The efficiency of the cell is moving up and the efficiency of the modules so yes, as this goes up, it becomes cost effective for lower light areas. So will it ever be cost effective for Canada? I do think so, but it's not gonna be in five years. Uh, I, it's gonna be a little bit further up, but uh, it, it's all a question of final cost of energy in, in the end, how many kilowatt hours you get in a year. Uh, it, it all depends on that. So it, I don't think it's necessarily Infe unfeasible for Canada, but it's much easier at this point in other parts of the world, of course. Okay, thank you very much.